In this video I'm going to explain the difference between a roughness map and a metallic map and what do each of the colors within each texture, the black and the white and everything in between, and what do they mean when it comes to the roughness and the metallic texture. And a lot of beginners don't understand what do the different ranges of uh, white to black mean when they look at a texture. You should be able to tell looking at a roughness map which parts are going to be shiny and which parts are going to be rough. And same for metallic. If you're looking at a metallic texture, you should be able to tell which parts are going to be metallic and which parts are non-metallic. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what each of those mean when it comes to using roughness textures and metallic textures with Redshift for Maya. So let's begin. So first, let me show you what a roughness texture looks like and what it does. These examples I got from textures.com. Here's a roughness map for a concrete wall. And what a roughness texture does is it defines which parts are shiny and which parts are rough. And it's a range between white and black and everything in between, all the grayscale values. And depending on what kind of grayscale value it receives, this texture is either going to be shiny or it's going to be dull or various range in between. Here's another texture that defines which parts are going to be rough and which parts are going to be shiny. When it comes to metallic textures, what they usually do is they define which parts are metallic and which parts are not. So you can always think of a metallic texture as a mask, which determines what parts of the object will be metallic and which parts are non-metallic. Both of these textures, the roughness and the metallic, are black and white or grayscale textures. Now you don't need to create them as a grayscale. They can be RGB, but the values within the texture have to be between white and black or a range in between. And then when you connect them up in Redshift, there's a special way to make them work so they translate into more linear color space and not as an RGB texture. And then some of the previous tutorials I've done that, I've showed you how to do this, but I will also show you here as well. Now let me break down the basics between different values for roughness and for metallic. When it comes to a roughness texture, if you're using a constant value, meaning that you're not using a texture, but you're using a value inside the redshift material, zero means your surface will be very shiny, very reflective, and one means it's going to be very rough, dull, and not reflective. And if you translate that to an actual color or more of a grayscale value, Zero will be black, so black is shiny, very reflective, and white is the value of one, which is going to be rough and not reflective. And when it comes to a metallic texture, a constant value of zero is non-metallic. This means that your surface is not a metallic surface, and the value of one means that your material is metallic. And again, this can be done inside the redshift material by changing the value from zero to one. Now, when it comes to roughness, you can use any value in between, between zero and one. So you can do any decimal within the range of zero to one. When it comes to a metallic value scale, what you usually end up doing is either define it as zero, your surface is not metallic, or one, which is metallic. And very rarely would you actually put a decimal in between. However, there are some textures that will be a wide range of grayscale. But on average, if you are going to be using a value of zero to one for metallic, you either set it to zero or one and not anywhere in between. So that's one big difference between roughness and metallic constant values. But when it comes to a texture, usually those will be created outside in another piece of software. And you might have a metallic that's a, a range of uh, between white and black. So these are important considerations that you should know about when you're looking at a texture. And because if you know these numbers and you know these values of white to black, then if you take a look at any roughness texture or any metallic texture, you can translate this into what will be shiny or reflective and which parts are going to be rough or not reflective, as well as which parts are going to be metallic and which parts are not. So here I have a basic scene setup that I've been using throughout the tutorial series for Redshift with Maya. And I have four planes they have right now just a Lambert material applied. So let me kind of step through using custom values first for roughness and then metallic. And then I have a few custom made textures that I'm going to replace and show you what they look like uh, when it comes to the actual values of black to white. 
and I think this will kind of make everything more clear if I use it as an example. So let me go ahead and create a material, a redshift material. I'm going to open up Hypershade and let's create a redshift material. And I'm going to name this uh, Roughness Metal or just something I can recognize when I assign to surfaces. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to set up the metallic workflow properties, which are BRDF. I'm going to change this to GGX. This is an improved reflection model. And then I'm going to change Fresnel type to metalness. And when you do this, it opens up an important property for metallic, which you can change from zero to one or plug in a texture. And then for roughness controls, you will also find under reflection and roughness property right here which you can change from zero to one or plug in a texture. So I'm going to leave everything at default and let's assign this material to all of these four planes. So this way we can see it when it's horizontal and when the plane is vertical, depending on how the light hits it. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these four planes, right click and assign existing material and choose the one I just created rough metal test. And let's go ahead and do a render. Now I'm going to enable IPR so I can uh, update in real time and I'm just going to circle around to get a better angle and let's take a look at the ones on the floor on the ground and see what's happening here. So right now this is a non-metallic surface and you can tell if it's metallic or non-metallic by taking a look at the properties for this material and under reflection if metalness is set to zero means it's not metallic value of one means the surface is metallic. So if I change this to one, you can see that the surface changes right away and it becomes metallic. And again, like I said before, if you change this from zero to one, you don't want to do anything in between. So you should not set this to 0.5 unless you have a texture that does it for you, which is usually authored in another piece of software. Like I mentioned, when it comes to values, you just stick to zero or one and how rough or how dull your metallic surface is, this is controlled through roughness parameter. So for example, I want this metallic surface to be metallic. So I'm going to change it to one. And then to decrease how shiny or how dull your metallics are, you come over to the roughness property and you control this value with any decimal between zero and one. So if I want it to be a little bit more rough, then I can do 0.5, for example, or maybe 0.2, or maybe even lower 0.1. So let me go ahead and uh, turn it down to zero. So again, to translate these numbers into black and white, when it comes to metallic, one is metallic and it's a color of white if you're looking at a texture. And for metallic, a value of zero is black, which is non-metallic. When it comes to roughness, a value of zero is shiny, which will translate to black in a texture. And a value of one, which is very rough and dull, which translates to white within the texture. So by using these kind of values, I have a few textures already made just for testing purposes. And here's what they look like. So this one right here, this is a roughness with a color black. So that means that this is a value of zero, which is going to make my surface very shiny. So if I go ahead and actually plug this in as my texture for roughness, so let's go ahead and connect this up really quick. I'm going to say image name and just, uh, off screen, I'm just navigating into my project directory, into my source images folder, and I'm just going to assign the roughness black that I just showed you. So you can see it assigned. Now there's one thing that we need to do. Actually, we need to do a couple of things for roughness textures. First, we need to make sure that color space is set to raw, not sRGB, because remember, it's more of a linear texture, not an RGB texture. And then we need to jump over into the hypershade and let me regraph this. And I need to zoom in and I need to reconnect one of the out color channels. And I usually use a red channel and reconnect it into reflection roughness. So this basically makes my texture in linear color space using one single channel rather than what it was defined before, which is out alpha, which we do not want to use. So this is what I always do for roughness textures, like I mentioned in one of my previous tutorials. Now with this connected up, you can see that this is exactly the same as if I change my roughness value to zero. But now instead of zero, I'm using a texture. Now, if I go ahead and replace this with another texture, so let me go ahead and navigate this. Now I'm going to choose another texture, which is this one right here. 
This is just a white texture and this will make this into a very dull surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and load that up, update it, and I'm going to change this to color space raw again. Anytime you update textures, it reverts it back to color space sRGB and I just need to reset it to raw. Now if I take a look at my texture now, this would be the same as if I set my material roughness of 1, but instead I am now using a texture, a roughness texture. And let me show you one more example. I have a third texture, which I'm going to replace for my roughness. And this particular one is a variation in between. This is what it looks like. This is just a clouds filter in Photoshop, and then I did a posturize effect on it, just to give me some range. So everything in black will be shiny, everything in white will be very dull, and there's going to be a range in between. So let's go ahead and connect this one up. Let me go back to roughness parameter, and I'm going to assign that texture that I just showed you. And change this back to raw. So if I take a look at my texture now, and maybe I just need to move it, you can see there's a wide, wide range of uh, black to white and everything in between. Again, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, so let me set this color to of the material to maybe a little, maybe a little bit darker. Sometimes that shows up a little bit better. So right here you can see that I have a various range of uh, shininess and dullness based on the custom texture that I created. And it's basically again, if you are using that number scale for your roughness. Everything in black is shiny, and everything in white is dull, and various ranges in between. So now if I pull back the other texture that I showed you that I got from textures.com, and if I plug this in as my roughness map, everything in white will be very rough, and the bricks themselves will have some reflectivity to them. So let me plug that one in as my roughness. And I need to go ahead and set this to raw again. So now if I just kind of take a look at a certain angle, you can see that in between is very rough and uh, the cinder blocks themselves uh, have some reflectivity to it because it's closer to black and anything in white is dull. So being able to understand this is very important so that way you can look at a texture and know exactly which parts are going to be rough, which parts are going to be dull uh, when it comes to Redshift and with Maya using Metal in this workflow. And this way, if you ever need to create a custom roughness map, you'll be able to do so, just like I've done with a uh, few other examples. Now, when it comes to a metallic texture, let me go ahead and uh, just remove this. Actually, I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to reassign um, a different texture. I'm going to reassign the black texture. So it's going to make my roughness, my surface, very shiny. And I'm just going to set this back to raw. So this is what we have. Back to as if the value is set to zero for roughness. So like I mentioned, if we go back into our properties, I can change my metalness property right here from zero to one to make it metallic. So this will make up my surface a metallic surface. And then I could control my roughness values for metallic through a texture. However, you can also control your metallic property through a texture as well. So I can use the black or the white textures that I used for roughness. I can use them right here for my metallic as well. Even though they were named roughness, I could reuse them for metallic because it's just a black and white texture. And if you understand the values, then you could reuse them for different purposes. Now, again, for metallic, it works a little bit different. It's more of a mask rather than various ranges in between. So I've made a texture or more of a mask. And here's what it looks like. And I'm going to use this to define which parts are going to be metallic and which parts are not. So black is not metallic or a value of zero and white is metallic or a value of one. So let's go ahead and plug this in and I'll show you how to also connect it up very similar the way you did roughness. So I'm going to come in and uh, I can do this inside the hypershade or I can do this in my attribute editor. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my metalness texture that I just showed you and use that instead of constant values. Let me go ahead, assign a file, image name, and I'm just going to use that metallic mask that I just showed you. And again, the first thing I'm going to do is change my color space to raw, and then go back to my hypershade. And I need to also reconnect my out color. And these kind of get twisted up a little bit. 
Let me just rearrange them a little bit better. So I need to reconnect my out color from one of the channels. Usually I use the red, but you can use green or blue for either one of these textures, for roughness or metallic. But I just need to reconnect one of these and not have it out alpha. Now right now my material has a little bit of a bug that I explained in one of my previous tutorials. So I'm just gonna quickly fix it by selecting my main material, hitting two on the keyboard so I can only see the inputs that, is, that are being used. Then I'm gonna take my out color for metalness and reconnect it into reflection metalness. Then I'm gonna select this back and hit four to get back to most commonly used properties. Otherwise you have this kind of weird connection that's being made for a metallic property that doesn't have a name to it. And if I take a look at my texture now, the areas that are in black right now are non-metallic. And this right here is white, which is metallic. So if you translate this to a texture that you look at from uh, someone else you downloaded from, or something you created yourself, or authored in some other software, if you take a look at this metallic texture, everything in black is going to be non-metallic. Different ranges of white to gray scale is going to be a, a mix in between. So this is an effective metallic texture that's going to tell you which parts are metallic, which parts are not. So in this case, this is a rusty metal and wood. And with Redshift, you'll be able to differentiate and render that surface correctly. So I hope this tutorial was useful because I, I personally really like to understand of what metallic textures are, what they do, what the values are, as well as what the roughness values do and what they are. So I can translate them in my mind when I look at them, whether I create them myself very quickly in Photoshop or when I use Substance or I download textures from online. I want to be able to, to look at the textures and understand what they're going to be doing inside the render.